discuss our museum with you today. It's the Center for Dialogue Przełomy in Szczecin, in the north of Poland. A city which used to be a German town before the war. And in place of our building, there used to be a quarter of townhouses, which was destroyed under Allied aerial bombings during the war. After the war, Szczecin became a Polish city overnight. And in the place of the former quarter of townhouses, an empty accidental square was left behind. And then the square witnessed some more tragic events in December 1970, when 16 demonstrators were killed fighting the communist militia. And since then, the square became a place of remembrance. Hence the idea to establish a museum on the recent history of Szczecin right there. An international competition was announced. And when we arrived for the first time, that was what the square looked like. To the right hand side, there was a monument called the Angel of Freedom. And right next to it, the Philharmonic designed by Barozzi Vega was supposed to be erected. And already back then, we knew that the building of the Philharmonic would be iconic for the city and that we would necessarily be upstaged. So our project was supposed to combine two contradictory traditions of the place, that of the pre-war quarter of townhouses and the post-war square. Here's what the concept looks like illustrated. You see the pre-war quarter and the post-war square, and our concept that combines the two traditions to create an urban hybrid of both a square and a quarter. In front of the Philharmonic and in front of the church, we needed some foreground. And so we stayed at the level of the square, of the pavement. But wherever we could and wherever we were able to mark the former quarter of townhouses, the square is slightly elevated. To the right-hand side, you can see the corner housing the museum, and to the left-hand side, the square again gently lifts to separate the square from the dense road traffic. As a result, an amphitheatrical concept was created. We wanted it to be truly monolithic and uniform in character. Hence, we selected a single material that is concrete. And you can see how the division lines in the square match the division lines on the facade, so that everything really gives an impression of being created of monolithic blocks of concrete. When you take a look at the situation now, you might wonder what part of the square actually houses the museum. And it's only the cross section through the ground floor that goes to show that it's only a small fragment of the square that houses the museum. That was the initial scope of the project, the initial scope of the competition. We decided it would make much more sense to design the entire square, thus violating the principles of the competition. But fortunately, the jury was on our side and in favor of that idea. Underground, the exhibition space is located at the minus one level, and you can also see it on the cross section. And the ground floor is really an extension of the square, primarily housing the entrance area. What you can see here is the entire square with the elevated corner housing the museum. To the right-hand side, you can see the building of the Philharmonic. And when you're standing right in front of the Philharmonic, you see the flat area of the surface creating a sort of a foreground before the building. The same flat area has been left in front of the church. And when you now look at the square from the side of the Philharmonic to the right-hand side, you see an elevation that separates the square from the dense road traffic. And to the left-hand side, you see the gently sloping corner hiding the museum. There are two entrances leading up to the museum from the square and from the corner.
And the entrance to the museum is hidden behind revolving walls. As you can see, they're usually found quite intriguing by school students and other visitors. Once they are closed, you have a perfectly monolithic structure. And it was a huge challenge for us to design the installations in such a way so as to end up with a pure facade. And also a pure square, which was even more important for reasons of usability. We also managed to encourage and convince our installation engineers to come up with innovative solutions, and that was a very subversive picture we used to advertise their installation work. So we were quite successful at encouraging them to use that very picture showing no pieces of installation whatsoever. But let us now move down from the level of the square to the level of the entrance. When you stand perpendicular to the facade, you get a peek inside the museum. And the interior of the museum is now revealed that continues the monolithic concept, as it's made of the very same concrete plates as the facade and the revolving walls. Right here, above the glass panes, you can see the hidden air inlet ducts. So as uh, we, we did that so as not to mutilate the facade. Now, as you descend into the exhibition space, you have to cross a boundary between two different worlds. The entire underground is painted black. And that idea uh, sprang up at the level of the realization when it turned out we would not be responsible for the interior design of the exhibition space. And we were afraid of the overly theatrical, artificial elements of the interior design. And we tried to distance ourselves from that project. However, eventually, authors of the interior design project invited us to collaborate on the project, and then we managed to convince them to do away with the unnecessary elements of interior design and replace it with contemporary art that is more subtle less literal. And it was then when we invited contemporary artists to join in the project. The black color was left there, serving as an ideal background for contemporary works of art. And this is how a museum on recent history of Szczecin was born, but at the same time, an art gallery. The exit from the museum is the negative of the entrance, leading you back up into the bright space outside. And then when the museum closes, when it's no longer open to visitors, life goes on in the square, as the sheer topography of the square is conducive to cycling, rollerblading, or even sledding as when it snows, as this is the only hill in town. However, the city authorities were used to different sorts of ceremonies. And we actually had to face a ban on placing any sort of floor cladding that people could ride on or do sports. We were very much against it, believing that the square should unite people rather than divide them. And when we finally managed to convince the city authorities of the concrete cladding, this is when problems began. It turned out it was not just the floor cladding, but also the topography of the square that may be problematic. This is the very first ceremony after the square was officially opened, and it ended up in a scandal. The most important figures were standing below the least important ones. The military didn't know how to march over the undulating surface of the square. It received a lot of media coverage, and we actually had to explain it to the military how to march over the undulating surface. But the veterans found skateboarders most problematic due to the floor cladding that people could actually skateboard on. And it took us a long, long time of mediation to reconcile the interests of different communities. But now the square is used by all of the different uh, groups in town, and we believe that was our huge success. And as you can see, I contributed to that success in person, that was the very day when the rules were changed and people could finally rollerblade or skateboard in the square. And it was then that the city authorities understood that this 
atypical square with its special topography could serve as a perfect venue for outdoor music concerts or summertime film screenings. And the residents of Szczecin themselves understood that it is their place, a place of spontaneous gatherings, such as the ones during the recent anti-governmental black protest marches. It is now a place of many different happenings. Sometimes the square transforms into a large drawing board, where children leave their colorful ornaments. But then it rains, wiping the square clean, leaving it open to new experiences. Thank you.